Hey everyone, I'm Linus and this is Andre and we're here at the Cinestill Lab and today we'll be showing you how to conduct a SNP test. Conducting a SNP test is one of the best and easiest ways to determine if your photographic chemistry is still working properly and it's especially useful for reusable chemistry that's designed to be stored. The name comes from the common practice of processing a small snip of film rather than an entire roll or sheet. It's not as useful as shooting and processing an entire test roll of carefully exposed images but it is quicker, cheaper, and can provide you with a starting point for further testing. All of the common at-home photographic processes like black and white, C41, and E6 can benefit from SNP testing. Here's how you can test your chemistry to avoid ruining your film with exhausted chemicals. DF96 is a single-step black and white monobath solution that develops and fixes your black and white film in just a few minutes at room temperature. It comes in 500 milliliters and 1000 milliliter volumes and is reusable for up to 8 or 16 rolls of film respectively. We recommend using the chemistry within two months of opening, so running a SNP test can help you determine if you should dispose of your chemistry or keep using it. Snip off a small piece of film that has been exposed to light for example, the liter of a roll of 35 millimeter film, and place it into a small container of DF96 at room temperature. Twirl the solution around for a few minutes. If the piece of film turns opaque black, your DF96 is still usable. You can save the snippet to compare to future tests and retire the chemistry when the snippet comes out thin instead of opaque, indicating that the developing agents in the monobath have exhausted. If you're a fan of the traditional two-bath black and white developing process, you can actually independently SNP test both your developer and your fixer. We'll show you how to do this with our D96 black and white motion picture film developer and F96 rapid fixer. To test your developer, place a light struck piece of black and white film into a small container of developer at room temperature. Swirl the film around for the indicated developing time. With Cinestill BWXX, that's about six minutes. At the end of the developing time, pour the solution back into its storage bottle and stop the development with running water. Then, fix the film for the calculated fixing time. If the piece of film turns out opaque black, your developer is still usable. Retire the developer if the test strip comes out thin. To test your fixer, you first need to figure out the film's clearing time. In general, to avoid the risk of insufficient fixing, film should remain in the fixer for twice the time that it takes the emulsion to visibly clear. Used fixers should be discarded when the film isn't visibly clear in twice the time as with fresh fixer. The clearing time of a film and fixer combination can be found by the following method. Take a piece of scrap unprocessed film and place a drop of fixer onto the emulsion side. Wait until the emulsion under the drop is a clear spot, then place it in a small cup of fixer and agitate. Time how long it takes for the film to fully clear until you can no longer see the spot in the center. The minimum fixing time needed is double the clearing time. Developing color negative film at home is incredibly affordable thanks to kits like our CS41 Color Simplified 2 bath solutions that can process up to 24 rolls of film. The kit lasts a fairly long time, but testing your chemistry is always a good idea. Like with the 2 bath black and white process, you can independently test both your developer and your Blix. To determine if your developer is still active, cut off a small snippet of light struck color negative film and load it into your developing tank. Run the film snippet through the two bath process, both developer and Blix, at the 102 Fahrenheit processing temperature, and then wash. If the developer is active, the film should be opaque black. Again, you can save the snippet to compare to future tests in order to monitor the health of the chemistry. Retire the chemistry when the snippet comes out thin instead of opaque. The Blix is less critical to test, but if you notice that your negatives don't look fully clear or the unexposed edges of the film look muddy or milky instead of transparent, you can always retire the exhausted Blix and re-Blix your film with fresh chemistry. To test your Blix, load a light struck snippet of film into the tank and Blix it for eight minutes at a temperature between 75 and 105 Fahrenheit, then wash. If the Blix is active, the film snippet should be transparent. Color slide chemistry, especially first developer, has the shortest usable life of the three main chemical processes. Because of this, it's especially important to test before processing if you've been storing the chemistry for a while. To test your first developer, cut off a small snippet of light struck film from the beginning of your roll of slide film. Load it into your developing tank and run the film snippet through the three bath process, first developer, color and reversal, and Blix at the 104 processing temperature, then wash. 
allow the film snippet to dry completely, as when wet, slide film will appear darker and with a color cast. When dry, inspect the processed film snippet. It should be transparent without a strong color cast. Retire the first developer if the snippet comes out dense instead of transparent. To test your color and reversal bath, skip the first developer bath, only processing with the color and reversal and blix steps. The film should come out an opaque black without the color cast. Testing your CS6 blix is the same as testing your CS41 blix. Here's a timestamp that you can go back to. Snip testing your chemistry is an intrinsic part of getting the most out of home developing and can serve as a starting point for further testing with actually exposed frames. I can't remember how many times I've avoided ruining my film by running a quick snip test, and we hope that this helps all of you out there. If you're interested in learning even more tips and tricks about home developing, stay tuned for more videos on the channel, and tell us what you'd like in the comments section below. As always, I'm Linus, and this is Andre. We'll see you next time.